Hey, it's Ian. Today I'm going to share with you exactly why your strokes get stuck in a rut. Even after years of lessons and drill groups and hitting with a ball machine and practice hitting. And I'm also going to share with you how you can get unstuck and finally reach your goals on the court. I'm headed someplace special so I can show you something important. So come along for the ride and we'll get started. So recently a private student flew up from St. Louis, Missouri to work with me. His name was David. And even though David has been playing doubles for decades, a long time, he told me that his volleys were a big liability. When he was up around the net, he just didn't have the accuracy and the uh, precision that he wanted. So after a little bit of video analysis and reviewing the footage and going and comparing it with other professional players, it became really obvious what his problem was. He was doing the classic step and punch with his volleys across his body. And the biggest problem was that his timing was totally off. He was slamming down with his foot stepping across before he hit the ball, which meant that he was wasting all of that energy and all of that momentum. And so his arm had to do all the work of kind of punching the ball and powering the shot. That's, That's the point. why this is so worthwhile. In my mind, I'm doing what yeah. you want me to do. Yeah. So we did a stroke review together and he understood exactly what he had to do, what the change was that had to take place. But this is where so many players and even coaches kind of go down the wrong path. And this is where I promise you, you're getting stuck. If you're working hard on your game, you're putting in the reps, but you're just not making the improvements, you're not making the changes, then you're going about it the wrong way. You're using the wrong process. And what most players do is they jump right into hitting balls after they understand the problem. And so maybe they review their own video and they're like, oh geez, I'm not following through. Or their coach tells them that once they understand, they just assume that they can just go snap their fingers and just go do it. But that's wrong because David has been playing tennis for decades and he's hit his volleys the old way tens of thousands of times. And so the reality is his brain has to be rewired. It doesn't matter how much he understands or how well he gets it, what he needs to do, without the right training, he's just gonna go back to his old habit. It would be kind of like me, after decades of driving the work in an automatic transmission car, one day deciding that I'm just gonna get into this one, which is manual transmission, and just go to work. The reality is, sure, it's still a car, and sure, it's still the same route, I still know how to get there, and I'm going to the same destination, but the mechanics are different. And so the habits that are required for each are completely different. And it doesn't matter if I watch a YouTube video or if somebody explains it to me really well, or if I read a book and I get, in theory, how to drive manual transmission, I can't just get in the car and drive to work in a manual transmission car if I haven't trained my brain and my body how to do it first. And so you have to start at the very basic, most easy level, and then work your way up from there. And that's what we did with David and his volleys. We're gonna start with the ground and then kind of come up from there. So we're gonna make that position number one, weight on the outside foot, and then I, I wanna see you on your toe. Yeah, exactly. So I, I can see that all the weight is here. There's, there's hardly any weight on that foot at all. And then I'd love to see you kind of mock hit the ball and then fall onto your, your left foot. Yes, exactly, yeah. Take your time in between the different steps. Okay, good. In, on the timeline of like when you'd be hitting the ball, contact hasn't happened yet and you haven't even ma made that step forward. So this would be, it's a little exaggerated because uh -huh. you're, you're kind of making a hop forward but this would be amazing use of the energy that you actually have going forwards. Remember, the whole point of using your feet correctly is so that you don't have to punch the ball, you can just guide the ball and your body weight does the, the work for you. So you're doing a great job with the feet. Now we're gonna bring your attention to the racket a little bit and I wanna see you mimic that the, the smoothness that you're stepping forwards. I now wanna see you have that same flow to what you're doing with your racket and with your hand. And once he started putting those things together, his upper body with his lower body, we looked at a side-by-side -side comparison of his new technique versus his old technique. And the difference was incredible. And he was unbelievably happy. Now keep in mind, we haven't introduced a ball yet. And a lot of players might think, oh, well, this is dumb. Like I'm not even hitting the ball. But that's the whole point because there's no way 
David would change the timing of his footsteps, change the way in which he was moving his body, change the timing, and smooth out his movement with his upper body all at the same time while I was firing a ball at him. But that's the way most players try to get better at their strokes, and so they just stay stuck. They stay in the rut that they've always been in. After a few more minutes of practicing incorporating the lower body and the upper body together, I asked him how he could feel the difference between his old technique and his new technique and he talked about the smoothness and he also told me that he had been using a tongue click like to signify contact to help him with the new timing so even though there wasn't a ball there he was actually giving himself a little piece of audio feedback and kinesthetic feedback to signify when the new point of contact would be and this was incredible this was such a brilliant move on his part because what he had done is added just a little micro challenge to the environment. Instead of there being no ball and no contact, he'd actually added a little um, identifier so that he could practice the timing of his movements, which was absolutely brilliant. But yeah, the, the noise is great. Go ahead and keep doing that. I was gonna ask you to say hit, but, but whatever, whatever makes sense to you, the noise is totally fine. Okay. Hit. Now, now here's the thing. Wow, the, I didn't do it. This is, this is really fascinating to me. So watch the, the one before you said hit. I want you to watch how your racket moved. So you were just kind of making the click sound here. Look at the position your racket finished in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, I, I, can't, I can't get enough of this. Now watch this. This is one where you said hit. Yeah, I wasn't smooth. I didn't put the racket on. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I believe, I believe, I don't care what anybody says, the fact that you said hit made it more real to your brain. And your brain is like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the ball. And all of a sudden, you went back to that square like squeezing of the racket. The word hit triggered his old habit. And he went right back to his old habit with his, with his hand and with his arm. So we hung out there a little bit. We kind of went back and forth between tongue click repetitions and saying hit. And once he totally got that smoothed out, I tossed him a ball for the first time. And what do you think happened? Keep in mind, we had been working together for about 45 minutes or an hour, and we had worked through five different progressions. I didn't watch the ball. What happened with your feet? I don't know. <laughs> If you'd like to get private coaching like David did to help you reach your tennis goals, then click the link in the upper right-hand corner of the video player or go to www.essentialtennis.com slash private coaching for full details and available dates. Ah, the ball, the ball, the ball. The ball's the hardest part. Here's your setup position. Here's, here's what happened with your feet. I didn't even move. <laughs> <laughs> this is why tennis is hard. Because <laughs> it, it doesn't matter how well you know what you're supposed to do. As long as the ball acts as a trigger, which it does, to pull us back to our old habit, all of a sudden, you're, you're, I don't know what you were focusing on here. Like he went right back to where he started an hour ahead of time. And this is where most players would get frustrated. They would quit. But to David's credit, he stuck with it and we kept kind of hanging out. We, we found little micro ways to take a step back, take a step forwards, and just kind of play with the different levels of challenge until he was actually able to hit a ball successfully doing all the new footwork and hand movements correctly, which was incredible. It's critical to understand that all these little steps and all, all the different progressions and the whole process that we went through, this is what's required this is why players get stuck is they don't understand that it's this type of intention and this type of focus and effort that it takes to really change a habit and so they never go through it because they don't know that it's required or they understand and they know that it's required and they just don't have the patience and they don't want to put in that kind of work okay we're here at that special place i was telling you about let's go check it out So these are the tennis courts that I started playing on as a 
10, 11 year old. I used to walk here from our house with my brother or our neighborhood friends and play with my, my parents' wooden racket that was still in the, you know, the press for all you old school players. I, I like coming here from time to time because it reminds me that this is all a process. This takes time and it takes energy and effort and the right effort. If David goes back home after that time spent with me and he doesn't find that new technique and he doesn't do the new technique enough times, quality of repetition and quantity of repetition are both important. It doesn't matter if he hits 10,000 volleys if they're the wrong ones. And it also doesn't matter if he hits the right one just 10 times and he's like, oh cool, I got it. It takes time and it takes the process. Just like essential tennis has taken time and it's been a process and myself as a player and as a coach and now as content providers. And so I just want to say thank you for all of you watching, for supporting us, for supporting me up until this point. For students like David, thank you for coming out and working with me, uh, for learning from us and for allowing us to guide you down the path to better tennis. I hope you learned something really important during this video. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.